Hello and uh, welcome back. Another video about my tools that I use for streaming. What you see here is Beni Overlay and Beni Overlay I use now for quite some time. It was at the time when I was looking for something like that. It was the only one that covered everything that I wanted to do. And uh, it also works with both simulators. So, um, and this, there aren't really that many other tools out there. I showed you one, the Zoom Toolkit Pro, uh, that's quite recent. Uh, there, there are the odd little things here and there, but not not something like Bene Overlay in, in all its depth and, and possibilities. And in order to see what Bene Overlay does, I call up my live view. And in the live view, you can see now um, at the bottom of the screen, this big bar uh, showed up with um, all the information that I usually show in my stream. There's quite a lot uh, that it can do. Um, and uh, here I show you now what this looks like from a uh, program point of view for the Bene Overlay. So, Bene Overlay is something that produces web page, let's call it that. So, basically, it's, it's like, a little, like a little web server. And in OBS, in, in my recording software that I have, I can create overlays that point to a specific URL. You may have seen this already in the Sim Toolkit Pro video. So, um, what it does is it connects to the simulator. By the way, you need to have XPUI PC active in Xplane for this to work in Xplane. And in the prepared FSX world, you must have FSUI PC, but the non payware version, the, the free version, is sufficient. Yeah. Then what you can do is you can fill out basic flight information. For example, we are departing from Antwerpen and we fly to um, EGLC. Um, then we have the route. You can put something in there. You can actually even put the route in there. Although if it gets too long, um, you may have difficulties uh, with the display. I usually, <laughs> these days, I actually leave that out, but I wanted to show you anyway what exists, then the airline, you, you can give the, the name of the airline, the ICAO code of the airline, uh, flight number, uh, for example, 120. So you can see then on the left corner of this bar, you see this little headset, and it, it's basically the ATC stuff. We are flight Alpha Tango Whiskey 120, Air Antwerp flight 120. The network, um, I put in VATSIM, IVEO, NAN, or like in that particular case, I used the uh, 124th ATC. Um, then comes the, cru the cruise altitude, 18,000 feet. Um, I'm not sure, does it actually display this? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, no, that, that's not shown. Um, max EIS, usually I put in uh, the, the speed with which we are going to fly. Um, transition altitude depends on the departure airport um, and sometimes if I remember I might actually put in the transition level of the arrival airport but usually I forget uh, and the aircraft ICAO is F50 for Fokker 50 for example that was a flight that I did a video also that I did and when you look at the bar uh, you see all kinds of, of uh, further fields okay such as the the EIS, the indicated airspeed, true airspeed, ground speed. You see heading and track, which is different or can be different, depending on where you are, for example, on the planet, and um, depending on winds and things. Alt, uh, the altitude is flight level 227 at the moment, vertical speed uh, 247. The direction of the wind is 002, mag magnitude or the, the wind speed is zero. Outside temperature minus 30 degrees, true air temperature minus 30 degrees. I'm not going into details now what all the differences are. And then the FPS, it pulls actually the FPS. We are paused, so it's zero, but it displays the, the um, I'm not sure how it calculates them, but it gets them from the simulator and it displays them here. And that's one bar. There is actually a second bar. They look like one because I arranged them like this, but they're actually two separate uh, pieces and in order to show you this I can go and um, make 
the progress bar invisible and now you can see how how this um, how I have combined these two into one there are views uh, for example the the stream view where they are separated okay but uh, in in my live view I have them at the bottom and I explained already in the sim toolkit pro that I use this not only for displaying the values but also to hide stuff so if I have pop-up windows um, for example I would actually move them down here and although I still see the the header uh, you don't see it because I don't always want um, ugly windows popping up and sometimes it's easier for me to have them down there and easily call them up instead of having to go into a menu or define an yet another key or yet another button <laughs> that I have to also remember which of the buttons do what um, so it's far easier for me uh, to do X checklists and the likes to just move them down here. You don't see them, so it looks pretty clean, um, but I can easily call them up again. Now, I don't want to go into an awful lot of details now with Bini Overlay, but I'm, I'm very quickly browsing through and show you uh, what's available. So there are general settings, and in the general settings you can give the font. I'm using Kalito 12 here on my system because I thought it's the it's actually the best and the clearest uh, font. It works really very well and it looks clean and, and, and crisp. Um, you can see the icon size. Um, I, I, I re reduced the icon size um, compared to the default. Um, I have icons enabled. I could turn icons off, but I find them pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's why I left them. And uh, there's a primary and a secondary font. The primary font is um, is the white one. That's the actual values. They're in white. And the secondary color and secondary font, uh, which I kept the same, is uh, for the uh, for the labels. Yeah, I A S colon T A S colon and so on. That's generally. So you can very quickly switch this uh, for all. Um, and then you have individual widgets as they're called. So these are now the uh, every block of widgets that you see, yeah? wind, heading, uh, temperature and so on. Uh, they may have more than one value, but um, you can here you can turn them on or off uh, individually. So for example, I could turn wind off and then it disappears. And then you can go into every single one and there you can now um, decide what to show. For example, the call sign actually offers uh, two settings. I could do this away or could do this away and, and reduce the information. And I could use a custom style versus the general. So in general, I defined what they all should look like. If I want, I could customize this for a particular widget and make a change, which I don't want because I want it to be the same everywhere. Uh, the same is here for the network. Um, then for the speed, you see, you could even show Mach. So, I, for example, I could go and uh, activate Mach, but because that is a bit big, I remove true airspeed, and then we could show Mach 0.69. I chose to use the true airspeed because uh, the true airspeed gives a, a, a better indication of... Um, um, of the speed versus uh, the environment, like the wind and so on. Uh, then heading, show heading, show track, prepend zero. So for example, if you take prepend zero uh, away, uh, you will see that, uh, well, that's actually, you won't see it now because we have a three digit heading, 248. But if you have, let's say 48 knots, um, with prepend zeros, you would get 048, Without it, you would get 48, but then it would look a bit crackly. So I prefer to have a fixed number of digits. It looks better in my view. Altitude, um, yeah, vertical speed and altitude. Then the wind, again, with the pre-pen zeros here, we can actually turn this off. And you can see that it's now magnitude zero. Uh, mm, why is it not updating it? That could be because of the pause state. Let me see. Yeah, just doesn't quite make sense at the moment. Because the zero should actually disappear. It doesn't. Oh, well. 
outside temperature, true air temperature, uh, and then the performance that's the show FPS. Um, you could also display VAS, which doesn't make sense in, in X-Plane, but in FSX, this was, would actually be an important uh, value because uh, the VAS would actually show you if you're running low on, on uh, kind of uh, vid video memory or whatever you want to call that. So uh, in FSX, that was quite important because if you were running out of VAS, then um, yeah, your, your session would be over quite soon. <laughs> Then we have the progress bar, that's the other part that I've just shown you, and here again you can turn on or off a lot of things, okay? I use the same font settings here, and then there's the landing, so let me quickly trigger the event. Um, somehow Benny Overlay doesn't really want to play balls today, let's click on test event, nope, doesn't work. Normally we should now see Ach so, let's go into settings mode. Oh, have I? Oh, hang on. Uh, I've disabled the landing monitor. <laughs> That's why in OBS I had actually disabled it because I use a script now, uh, Fly with Lua script. So, but that's, that's this pop-up window here. And again, you can cater, you can change the background image, you can uh, change what is displayed. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. And there are quite a few settings around the landing monitor. And that's it. That's, that's basically it. Once you have your settings and your fonts and your colors the way I have it, you do not need to make any changes there. The only thing I change is I start up bin overlay, I put in the flight details, um, and then uh, they show up, and that's it. And then I just hide it, hide the window, and uh, we're ready to go. So that's bin overlay. It's quite a simple, simple tool, but to me it's quite powerful and it, it really, really, um, yeah, it, it, it's extremely useful for me. That's it. Thank you for watching. Until next time.